Alrighty, for real this time. Welcome to Season 14. I'm gonna be playing Belveth versus Nunu. And although a lot of things have changed, I'll spare you the info dump. I'm sure you can find those where you want to. Uh, we're gonna do all we what we've always done here. The basics. Mr. Casting in Flash. So that means I'm gonna level 3 gank that guy. So let's go ahead and recall, swap to sweeper. So with the basics, right? The jungle for the most part has stayed the same. Whenever you're clearing your jungle camps, that part stays the same. And then whenever you enter the river, that's where the game changes. Where you enter the enemy jungle, the game changes. And now, there's the Void Grubs and the Dragon that spawn at the exact same time. So you, you'll have an objective to play around on the second turn, every single time. And that means that there's going to be a lot of fights. But as a jungler, you don't have to choose right now which one you're going to skip for. If you consistently farm and make yourself strong, at least on Belveth, then you'll be able to react to what's going on. If you have advantage, sure, go fight the enemy. But until then, the worst thing that you can do is commit to something that you don't know is a guaranteed win. And if you do that, you're going to lose. And that's just where 90% of the mistakes day one are going to come from. So what I'm telling you to do, basically, is find the neutral position and don't commit. Just watch it happen. Look right at it, look at it right in its face. And then you can choose to commit to that play or go do something else because there's always something else to do now. If if my both my soul lanes are losing and the enemy jungler's doing those void grubs, yeah, I want those void grubs as Belveth. I can even get form off them now. But if I commit to it, uh, we're gonna die. So instead I could go take his camps. And then I could flank bot lane and gank them. Something like that. You always gotta look for the next play. Alrighty. Fizz has pushed in Cassidy, so I won't be able to gank just yet. So let's keep farming my camps. We're running PTA, Triumph, Alacrity, just more damage, more burst damage. If you look at the enemy team comp, we won't have an extended fight. Because I'll be going in and out. I won't be staying on someone, even though they're pretty tanky. And then we have the option to build double on hit with things like this. And then free boots and futures market, futures market guaranteeing that we get that noon quiver on the reset and also helping us complete the full on hit items. So you need to complete the whole item as Belveth to get the maximum effect. And no matter where the game state is at, with the futures market, it aids you in completing those items sooner or getting them in a losing game state. So it's kind of a win-win. These guys are pushed up and fighting, but I will not be ganking. That's too big of a wave. Finish up my full clear, and then we can look for something after. With the build for Belveth, keep it simple. As all things, as much as they change, they stay the same. We're going Kraken Slayer as our first item. And you don't have to worry about anything else yet, okay? Let's gank Mr. Cassidy. Now this is kind of hard. As you can see, the map is humongous. You're scaring him. This doesn't help me. Moving. Q. Q. Flash. W. Q. Auto. E. Alrighty. Nunu's not gonna kill us. But maybe Trindamir would. Auto. 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 And then we're gonna W. Auto. Q. Oh! See ya. Yes, Fizz gets the kill. Noon Quiver 120 off, so that's where I skip the Scuttle Crab and Fizz takes the kill, that's the price that I pay. But I was committed to that one because Kassadin has no flash. I felt pretty safe just walking into Nunu, but he dealt quite a bit of damage. That Dark Harvest and whatnot. Water Walking also gives him AP. Uh, water Walking such a good rune now. So as you can see, the mid lane's a lot bigger and the river a lot longer, so it kind of shifts up how things are strong and which things are not strong. So we have 18 seconds on the Void Grub. Since we'll finish our clear on the top side, we can try to go for these. Now, if you're level six, then you get the empowered form for Belveth on the Void Grubs, but you can do them even if you're not level six, they respawn every four minutes and that's individually. You can just take one Void Grub and then leave. So, and with these, they give you quite a bit of XP. So we're level five right now. You can't sneak in to this uh, pit anymore with this scryer thing. You can't, you used to be able to hug the wall. Now that's not the case. So we'll start these up and see if the enemy wants to come fight us. Since Trindamir and Kassadin are so weak level five, we don't even have to worry about it. 
Smite. Nice. And then they commit it to a bad fight. You'll love to see it. Yes. So we went from level 5 to like 30% now. It's not too bad. Alrighty, let's reset to our bot side. We get the Noon Quiver. So whenever you start the objective, right? This is Belvest's juice now. You, you clear all your camps, you start the objective, and the enemy comes to you. The classic. Why do you farm your camps? Brother, we're playing Belvest. She has the infinitely stacking attack speed passive. Did you forget? You're a carry champion. Did you forget? We are not a bruiser no more. You're very much this carry champion. Especially once things starts ramping up here. Alrighty, so mid lane's flash is back up. Let's clean up these and then go from there. Clean up this blue side. So with the Void Grubs, three minutes on the respawn timer. And that, those three minutes will fly by like nothing. We have time to do some camps, do a gank, reset, clear some more camps, and those bad boys are back up. The dragon's not really on the board. We're very much looking for the bot play. Uh -huh. At least nobody can TP. Oh god, guys. On to Varus here. Auto, auto, Q, auto, Q. Moving. Not the phase rush. Who gave you that? Oh, I could have clinked his Q with my W. Shh. Let's keep farming. A useless play? Back to the camps as fast as possible. That gives us level 6. Now we're looking for the Kraken Slayer completion, so that's 250. All the meanwhile, we can guarantee that we're farming a little bit faster than the Nunu. One forty-two. It's a shame. If Fizz didn't take that kill, I would have had Noon Quiver and I would have had Kraken Slayer. Do -do. These guys need to be careful, bot, but it's fine. Yep, new season. And one thing that I would recommend for everyone is just play the game. The win loss on rank doesn't matter. You can't control the outcome, and you also can't control how well you're gonna do. But what you can control is that you're going to put in time right now, get the errors out of the way, figure things out, and be better better off for it. The type of player that's like, I'm not going to play until, you know, things are less chaotic and I, the items are figured out in the good build. You're just waiting for nothing. You're waiting to live. Life's happening right now. Queue up. Hurry up. All right, let's reset. Ah, yeah, let's reset. We got Kraken Slayer. This fight's genuinely, like, going to happen without us. Keep maxing the Q, more clear speed, Kraken Slayer, and we're going to go to Nunu's top side. We could follow this bot play, but it's already happened. And since Nunu ganked bot, those blue side camps are going to be up. Okay, and he's on Dragon too. Can I contest this? No, I'm outnumbered. It's a level 6 Varus, care. Wow, Trinomir's really trading. Such a bad time for him. So now Trinomir is going to be pushed in. 30 seconds in the Void Grubs. I have just enough time to take this guy's blue side camps and then do those. Kraken Slayer completed. We'll be clearing much faster. What is going on? Nunu's trolling. If we get right here, they won't see us. Much easier. Waiting, waiting. Q, auto. Oh god, he died. <laughs> he died to just my Q. 13 seconds on the Nunu, so I'm going to take his blue buff and then do the Void Grubs. Oh, sorry, Mr. Pantheon. I simply don't care about you. I care about my Void Grubs form. Q. Q, W. Q. Auto. 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 Q. Auto. He didn't ulti, and he ghosted. What's going on? Now, if you get even one Void Grub, you can get your Empowered Form on Belveth. So since we're level 6, the Void Grub's dead, it drops that Coral, and that Coral is going to give you, bang, the 180 Form. Moving, W. Auto, Auto, Q, Auto, Q, Ulti, Bong. See ya, casting him. Nice Ulti, but the damn Blast Cone. His Ulti's coming up. Q. And then we're going to do nothing. Oh! Run! Wow. An Alistar out of nowhere. Alrighty. 
Ay, 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 why are you make it so difficult? Okay, back to base. Spend our gold, get back onto the map. Now I can go defensive boots here, like Ninja Tabby. Those are okay, they have quite a bit of magic damage. It's definitely awkward. Let's do that, let's get a longsword and we can figure it out later. So now, the second item for Belveth. Um, instead of Stridebreaker, I think this item's significantly weaker. It's more of a engage item. Not so much the mid-range item that it was before, because they took off the ability haste and the damage. If you're looking for a bruiser item, I think Black Cleaver is going to be your go-to. Gives you HP, AD, ability haste, and that armor reduction. And that's going to make it where you can fight tanks and also take some damage, because sometimes it's pretty necessary to take that damage. In this case, Trindamir, Nunu, ca like Kasten. All these champions get eviscerated by one funny item. And that one funny item is going to be Blade of the Rune King. So it gives us 12% enemy current HP physical damage. Nunu's trolling. So that's going to be our second item here. Alrighty, into his red side. Do you have any camps for me, big man? So no camps? Gives me flank on bot lane, but not exactly super useful. Wah! No golems? Nice, Alistar wants to go in. There we go. There we go. W. Q. E. Q. Smite. Auto. 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 Q. Ulti. Bong. That's going to help us maintain that Rift Herald form. Now this is the Void Grubs. When you auto attack the turret, it deals true damage. Since we have five stacks, it's going to spawn one funny minion. One of these little guys. And then those will spawn more funny minions as well. Q. Auto. Auto. Q. Holy. That guy died so fast. So we've dealt an extra 400 true damage with those Void Grubs, and those are going to help you chew through the turret plates. The turret plates have damage reduction. Damage reduction does not apply to true damage. Not only do you spawn the funny Void Grubs, but you, those will spawn the funny minions from Belvess passive as well. It's so crazy. You might be thinking, Sawyer, where's the Rift Herald? Don't worry, it comes up once at 14 minutes. So since we got that play in the bot lane, we took their turret. Let's go ahead and finish up our blue side camps and reset to the top side to fight for that Rift Herald. The Rift Herald's pretty much the, ch the same. You can jump in it to control it. But one thing they did change is that whenever you are soloing it, just like Baron, it reduces damage taken by the person that it's hitting. So it's much easier to duo, or it's much more necessary to duo the Rift Herald than it was before. Since you'll be taking, you'll be dealing reduced damage. Pickaxe, recurve, back to the top side. We got a big old shutdown, but they're too weak. I have winning everything for once. For once, I have winning everything. You don't know how many games I've played where it's like insta loss. And now imagine trying to record those games too. 21 seconds on Rift Herald. Let's get red buff and then go fight. We're looking for level 13. That will give us our E max too. Max the Q early so that we can farm faster. And then max the E later when you have the two on hit items. I'm solo right here, so I'm not going to show just yet. This guy's too deep, but we can still maintain our Fog of War advantage. Oh god, maybe not. So if I get a big flank off, if they try to enter the pit at all, or even their own jungle, then I can collapse on them. Engage onto Alistar is not what we're looking for. But this starts the fight, and I can get behind them and get onto the Varus now. Q, auto, W, auto, Q. Moving. Q, Q, E. Nice. Patient with the flanks. That's going to spell your success for Belveth. And that's why we run the blue smite to this day. Alrighty, so here's the Rift Herald. She's looking pretty much the same. And now since we're doing it, we're going to be doing it much faster. Bong. And now whenever we drop Rift Herald, you get to control it. Let's reset by Bork, and then I can show you that Rift Herald in a second. So we already got armor, and we can go into Magic Resist now. Wit's End has changed a lot. Look at this item. 55% attack speed. 50 Magic Resist. 20% tenacity. Applies 35 magic damage on hit. It's weird. Tenacity against Nunu, Varus, and Alistar, gen generally good, but not necessary. So we have a couple options. Since we already have Bork, we could do Black Cleaver, 
We can do Rage Blade. Either one of those are going to be our best. Terminus is much later into the game. You don't have to worry about that yet. Bork and Kraken are still the core for Belveth. Smite. Let's go find Mr. Cassidy. I want to cause some problems for that guy because he wants to scale and I don't want him to do that. It's just weirding me out how he's not showing. This is a bad position for a fight. Q, W. Close. Casting got a kill. Annoying. I'm chasing Casting to the top side. I don't care. Alright, let's drop the Rift Herald. Come on, take the turret. So here's what you can do. You can click the Rift Herald and then you control it like this. And whenever you slam into a turret, it's going to bump you back pretty far and give you a shield. And if you bump into a champion, of course, you're just going to knock him up and deal damage. It's pretty beast. It's way more useful to use that, obviously, to get kills than it is to just pretend to be Rift Herald and bump the turret. Oh my god, I'm so much stronger than the enemy. It's so lame. So lame that I can't find a fight. So I show that I'm moving here, and then we'll jump over this, get into this bush, and then see if we can't gank Mr. Kasten, because he's trying to side lane, he's trying to sneak out some XP, so we're going to try to make him pay, rather than doing my camps right now. Ulti, Q, moving. Now save the Qs, holding, 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 he's going to Q away. Oh my god, he's already there. Alrighty, Mr. Kasten. Well, that's all of his mana. Yes, fight me. My auto, 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 Q, E. Dumbass. Nunu doesn't even come close to dealing any damage at this state. He has Haunting Guys, Bomby Cinder, Fiendish Coda. He has nothing. Hello. Hello, you have no mana. So his fist pushes, I can help him take the turret. Let's build up our passive. And then, bang, void. Oh, shit. Void Grubs. Bang, 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 bang. Let's reset. I'm thinking Rageblade personally. Black Cleaver would be much more responsible, but you know what they say. Go big or go home. So Rageblade is a bit different too. If you look at the completed item, 30 AD, 30 ability power, 25% attack speed, 30 magic damage on hit with stacking attack speed. Since Belvest can stack that so quickly, it's pretty... It, it's pretty much the same deal, where once you complete this item, it really, really augments how much DPS you can deal whenever you press that E. It's so crazy. Why are you fighting? Mid-game, follow the play. Don't forget it. Moving. Okay. I'm looking for the flanks still. Mr. Cassidy, how dare you? I wish I had a ghost. I wish I had Ghost. Yes, hit the turret. Now, he can jump over this big wall. I can't necessarily get over the big wall. So we want to save our dashes here. Smite. Q. Auto, 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 auto. Q. E. Q. He tried to fight me. Amazing. Amazing. You should have ran. Let's keep pushing this down. Rageblade, pretty much the same, gives you that double hit on the passive, and then the build path, Hearthbound Axe, doesn't give you movement speed anymore, just AD and attack speed. They move that movement speed to the Phage. Have a little bit of time to push this. Run! Nunu's on his way to kick my ass. Run! Q. Okay, nice. Well, we have a lot of time to play with. I want to complete the full Rage Blade. So let's farm nothing. Eight gold. Don't mind if I do. It's funny too with the Amp Tome. Like, Belvest still utilizes that because you have an AP ratio on your W. Lol. So now we have the double on hit and we have some magic damage. So now is where we go for Terminus, giving us 40 AD, 30% attack speed, 30 magic damage on hit, and then stacking magic resist and percentage armor and magic pin as we go. Why are you guys on Baron? You out of your mind? Must be. There we go, let's fight. E. Q. 
waiting for my allies to go in. I can follow up with my W. But we don't have to. That's the thing. I'm gonna start the dragon. It takes the enemy a long time to do the Baron, even if they want to try to faint it, so... Again, they choose that, I choose this. Lol. You chose useless option. Okay, you guys take the fight. Get the fist TPing in. Casting TPing in. But I have a good flank. Q. Auto, 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 Q. Auto, 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 Q. Auto, auto. Not my best work. Bong. We save our E. So that if they cast it in... Or Trinomir goes in. Q, W. Auto, moving. Q. Q. Flash, E. Close. Really good flash by Kasten. Q. Blue smite. Q. Q. Auto, auto, auto. Nice. I think already our time for Baron. The enemy team is trolling with that one. Trying to attack the Baron is so crazy. We're so much stronger than them. What they should be trying to do is get some picks. Nunu has a Rift Maker. Amazing. Do you like building sustained DPS on Nunu? Amazing. Look at the true damage to Baron. 800, 900, 1000, 1500, 2000. It's my bong. So as you can see, the red buff's purple. Past 20 minutes, the red buff and the blue buff will give everyone the buffs. So everyone has red buff now. Um, let's do Raptor's Recall for a BF Sword and then go fight. Terminus is very much like a fourth, fifth item, I think. I could be wrong on that, but this item is like, okay, but it's definitely not an early game item. It shows it in it too. Your attacks grant you 6% armor pin and magic pin. Percentage pin things are always going to be for later in the game. So it makes it pretty obvious, but people build that early. Just because it's a new item, but it's not good early. Whoa, Nelly. Noob alert. Ba -ba 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 I don't even have to use an ability, man. Wake up, Nunu. Got nothing better to do. Now, these guys are all top lane, so I don't exactly have a play. I'll just push bot lane. If I kill the minion wave, then I spawn the funny minions. And with five stacks of the void grubs, we also spawn one minion whenever we hit a turret. If you get six stacks, which would be all, all six of the void grubs, then you spawn two minions. Smack, 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 smack. Hello, friends. Danger, yeah, I'll be careful. Q. Okay, bad hook. W. No, oh, whoops. Smack, 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 smack. Q. Q. Alrighty, I dodged ulties. Smack, 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 smack. Moving. W. There we go. Auto, auto, auto. I'm not queuing in because it's a commitment. There's no reason. I'm gonna get to the... Get the reset. Recurve bow. Dude, it's just so bad. Like, Terminus just feels so bad. I could be building Infinity Edge and my E could be critting for like 400 per auto and I get a billion autos, you know? Surely Terminus sucks. Hopefully I can complete it so we can just see. My E is dealing so much crazy damage, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wish it showed the total damage that the E would deal. Any noobs in here? Huh? I heard there was noobs around here. No, nobody farms, I see. Nobody farms around here. We hate jungle camps. Like, the red buff dies from 5k like that. Let's try to flank the Varus right here. Q. Moving. I had to guess Varus is like somewhere behind here. Okay. Ping 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 ping. 
Hello. Smack, 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 smack. Be careful. Yeah, I'll be careful. Don't worry about me. We don't queue onto Nunu as he has a whole Varus behind him. Dumbass. Alrighty, and now with three inhibs down, we can just stare at him. I'm gonna go for a flank once again here. <laughs> Varus is running for the hills. Ah, oh, sorty, sorty. Where did I take so much damage from? Damn. I'm gonna heal off a of camp, boys. Oh, wait, I gotta buy my terminus. Guys, for the video. Samira, I could put it in the thumbnail. It deals 30 magic damage on hit in the late game. I don't see why that doesn't scale. I can't think of another item to build, honestly. This doesn't give us crit anymore. Like, I don't know, man. Just give me, just give me a BF sword and call it a day. I'm too juiced. GG. Oh. And Fizz will send us home, huh? Fizz seems to be pretty good. Every time I see this champ, he has a billion kills because of the new item Storm Surge. Stylish. Alrighty, final score 12, 1, and 8 with 218 CS. It seems like this season it doesn't show the damage dealt with the item, so it sucks that I can't do that recap for you. It is what it is. Alrighty, and that is going to put us at Diamond 4. Big! Diamond 4, 1 LP. Final damage dealt, 1800. And let me see how much physical damage versus magic damage we dealt. 1700 magic damage, so that's all from items. That's <laughs> that's not bad. Oh yeah, yeah. Where do I think Belveth is at the start of the season? Easily A tier at least. Where she gets to fight so much early, that's very good for her. People will view her as feast and famine, but that's because they're not going to be farming. If you farm, you won't be feast or famine. You'll just be pretty even, and then if you get a, a single shabink, then you're in there. You win. But yeah, I think she's fine and. I think that the new items don't affect her too much, honestly. The Kraken Slayer being slightly different is really good for her, giving you a lot more damage. And then I think the build path into Bork is a whole lot more accessible than it used to be, given the pace of the game. It's going to go fast. And you're going to be on two items for most games when you don't get 12 kills. And instead of the Stride Breaker, go for Black Cleaver. Other than that, the same things stay the same. Farm your camps, fight when you can, and then when you get a single good fight, you win. If you commit to a bad fight, you instantly lose. So don't commit to a bad fight. Easier said than done. I skipped my I, I skipped three camps and ganked bot. Why did I lose? Hard to say, man. Good luck in your games in season 14. Don't be scared to queue up. Get in there. Alrighty. Bye. See ya. Alrighty, welcome back. Ow. Game two. Mr. Belveth. And basically. PTA for the same reason. Oh, what is the deal, boys? You trying to take my red side? Like, that's not gonna work. We got Shaco. Anyways. Bunch of champions where we wouldn't have a consistent fight, so we go PTA instead. Q! Alrighty. And they're just sh <laughs> Hey, I'm really getting focused right now. They're gonna know that I start on Raptors, but that's okay. Even if they try to steal them with Wei's abilities, what we do... Q! Is delay the way that we deal our damage. Alrighty. This guy has spent like 200 mana on just me, level 1, so you would think that that would matter. PTA because we're not going to have sustained fights with the Conqueror, and the Shaco is going to start bot side. My main thing is that I'll be able to counter his blue side if he looks for a bot lane gank. And we can kind of go from there. Play for the farm advantage more than matching tempo or anything like that. Me? Play for me. At the start of the season too? If you're not committed to any plays, the ball can keep rolling. Alrighty, so Mr. Shaco, if I had to guess, boys, if I had to bet a billion dollars on it, I think, personally, that he's going to be ganking bot lane. Finish these up, use our health potion, and we should get back to full HP. Q. Schmack. Schmack. 
So much for full HP. I do have a gank on top lane. Oh, Shaco is top. Now that's weird. For Shaco to be top, level 3 doesn't make any sense. Oh. Hello. Moving. That's fine. And then two... My blue side, because with top lane now there's this humongous wall. If Shaco wants to gank, how? Are you gonna dive the rumble? My rumble's so safe, where LeBlanc pushed him in. So that part's pretty beast. Gives you a lot more freedom to farm in the early game as a jungler, rather than permanently looking to like counter plays. But for Shaco to start blue side is super weird. We had a ward on his raptors, the icon stayed up, but I figured that was just... just fake. So, my idea of getting into his jungle, let's stick to that. Skip our blue side camps. Blue and Gromp are the slowest camps for you as Belveth. And then skedaddle on into this guy's red side. Then we'll have a flank onto Hue. Especially if Cinder trades quite a bit. We see the Shaco recalling, so even if I stay for his red buff, the Shaco's going to reset with better items. So it's better for me to look for a play afterwards, rather than going for multiple camps. My W's up, so let's look for the flank here. Q, auto, Q, auto, Q, W, Q, E. So. Now, this guy has TP, so if I shove with Cinder, it's pretty much a mistake. And Shaco's going to be resetting to the bot side stronger than me, so I'm not going to go there. I'm going to take my free top side scuttle, look to farm enough camps for the Noon Quiver, and then reset. So yeah, the basics of Belveth has pretty much stayed the same here. One thing that you'll see on turn 2 is where a whole lot of action starts. Like, a ton of action just comes out of nowhere once these objectives spawn. The Void Grubs and the Dragon. These both spawn at 5 minutes, and that's where things start to get really messy because supports and junglers and everyone's just like moving around the map and it gets real chaotic. How you play it or how you should play it, you got me, man. But one thing's for sure as we as you go into the beginning of the season here, you want to put yourself in a position where you could choose to go in or choose to leave. And that's going to be the neutral position. If you commit in all the time, it, it can go right or it can go wrong. But if it goes wrong, which it's pretty likely to, you know how your games go. If it goes wrong, then you take a big-ass L for it, and you don't have to do that. I already care for Shaco, boys. Let's reset, get that Noon Quiver, and then we can clear up towards topside again. Swap the Sweeper, get a Control Ward. Control Wards are a lot stronger on the first reset for this reason. Have a Control Ward in this bush, and this bush, and this bush. Like, it really helps you to fight for the Dragon or the Void Grubs. As Belveth, the Dragon is not our issue in the early game. And my main, prior my main prerogative is going to be getting more camps, getting more Golden XP for myself. Oh god, queuing through the Gromp wall. It's season 14 and that's still in the game. Because if we farm our camps, we get strong. If you don't farm your camps, you don't get strong. This guy says, help bot. They're full HP, I'm good. Why? Well, my blue is up, my wolves are up, and my raptors are coming up. Not my raptors, the void grubs are up. Alrighty, to the Void Grubs we go. Now the Void Grubs give you your empowered form, but only if you're level 6. So we're level 5.5. I would have had to got double Scuttle or two more of Shaco's camps to have any sort of... to have that level 6 before the Void Grubs spawn. Alrighty, moving in. He's not on the Void Grubs. Auto Q, Auto W. Q, 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 Auto, 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 Flash, E. Nice. Auto. Alrighty, that's okay. Because that gives me some XP, and now what I can do is the Raptors into the Void Grubs. Free Curve Bow, Control Ward, and back to the top side. That also is Shaco's Ignite, and also... Oh god, Rakan's here. Oh, I hate this part. Their guy's right there, and my funny guy's down there. And I need to get that funny guy from there all the way. Uh, here he is, all the way over there. Let's get level 6. Raptors are always going to be a fast camp for us. And with that level 6, uh, we still have the, like, 600 smite. Alrighty, let's fight, boys. I love this part. This is where it gets messy. Let's do this. Pull. Keep close. Q, W. None of us are landing shit. Q. 
back in. <clears throat> Alrighty, to the Void Grubs. I just need one Void Grub to get my form. Syndra, where are you going, baby? Okay, W. It's not looking too hot, I'll be honest. Q, E. If it works, it works. The Rumble, like, 1v9 that. And wasn't even, like, a fantastic ulti, you know? Moving. Already leave? We don't have to keep fighting like this. Nice. We'll use our E. Run! LeBlanc, go home, bitch. Q. What? She kills me with Noon Quiver with all of that? Ay Dios. I want the one Void Grub, boys! I don't want all of this. We killed the bad guy. Go back to the objective. Alrighty, so all of that happens. Listen, the Empowered Form isn't worth that much. My camps are up. It's time to do all these camps. Get the Kraken Slayer, and then we go from there. <sighs> when I said the games are messy, that's like... <laughs> we had it. We had the way dead. We had the numbers advantage into nothing. Ideos. Shaco takes the Void Grubs. You get the announcement once they kill all three. The Void Grubs give you a buff in which whenever you hit the turrets, you deal more true damage. It's whatever. The main shebang for Belveth is going to get that... is going to be getting that early form. Right, you take the Void Grubs, I take your camps. Deal. Do we have a deal, partner? Wade's not showing, and I got a lot of camps to farm, man. We're 53 CS to Shaco's 33. You'll also notice this in your games. Lots of people just have no amounts of farm. Because they fight everything. And you might be thinking, do I have to fight everything? No. Don't worry, Patrick. You can farm your camps on Belveth. And choose one good fight, and then win the game. Oh, I farm so slow without that Kraken Slayer. We get our jungle upgrade where we have the 900 smite now. Again, it's not really about the dragon for us. I'll finish up my camps and then we'll reset. The Void Grubs respawn every four minutes, and that's each individual Void Grub. So like I said, you just need one Void Grub to get the Empowered Form. And that's going to give you the 180 cooldown on it, and then you could just leave the other ones. And that's honestly the best play. The Void Grubs also give you quite a bit of XP and gold. Quite a bit of XP, the gold is whatever. But it's really good to use for tempo when there's nothing else to do. LeBlanc has that static ship now, so Rumble's going to be in a bad spot. And the reason we clean up all these camps is so that they respawn. They're going to give us a lot more XP whenever they respawn, because the soul lanes have a ton of XP right now. Level 9, level 8. Moving! Q, moving. Q, auto, 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 E. Q, W. Nice. Stupid LeBlanc. You have a massive wall, you can't even utilize it. Playing all the way to the right side. If you're a top laner and you play all the way to the left, much harder to gank. Moving from there to there. Kraken Slayer. Um, now they have quite a bit of CC, but we're still going to go Ninja Tabby. That LeBlanc will be slightly AD, Shaco and Varus. And then we can get some magic resist later. I made a big mistake by not running Legend Tenacity. Look at their team comp. My bad. My bad. Well, why didn't you get Merc Treads? Shut up, man. I need Ninja Tabby. Reduce damage from autos. Get armor in the early game. I'm pretty strong. And we're definitely farm max over the Shaco. So I'm in position in the river. Rakan shows left side mid. So I'm going to look to flank the Varus. They have a control ward, but hey. Did he see it? Is brother awake? Let's clean that up. Clean this up. Oh. Now, it looks like they're trying to collapse on a spot lane, but that's okay. Auto, moving. Dude. Hard to commit in. You can see I'd be committing into a 1v4 here. Nice damage. I could look for a flank, that's going to be the only productive play I really have. 
that the play is over, so we'll just concede that and then go to the camps. With the Void Grubs respawning, I want to farm my camps into that, whereas Shaco is probably going to skip his camps into the Void Grubs. So even if we lose the Void Grubs, listen, it's okay. The Empowered Form is cool and all, but you don't need it. What you need is farm. Nothing has changed with League of Legends. As much as things change, they stay the same. You have more farm, you have more XP, and you have more gold than the enemy. And Belfuff has the ability to do that, so we're going to utilize that. Kraken Slayer, we're farming way way faster than a Ghost Blade Shaco. That Ghost Blade sucks now, too. It doesn't even give him the damage. Alrighty, boy. F Void Grub time, if you want. You guys don't have to come do these. And why would you have a ward right there? There's no pixel bush. Oh, uh, my urge to jump over and do them is high, but like I would instantly lose the game. That's the thing. And I just need one for the form, how lane. Why why not jump? Oh. Uh, they have Rakan. They have Shaco, man. Onto here. Q. Moving. Q, W. Oh my W wasn't up. Sorry. Q. You always keep those backwards cues so you can back out of the fight, but... And now, since it's 1340, the Void Grubs have despawned. And now it will spawn the Rift Herald. The Rift Herald has the debuff that Baron has. Whoever is hitting it deals less damage to it. An enemy has been or whoever it's hitting deals less damage to it. So it's harder to solo that Rift Herald. No idea, Rakan's gonna stay. Not getting the Rift Herald is pretty bad. But where Rakan is here and not in the bot lane, they're going to be able to take the bot turret. So whenever they do rotations like this, instead of fighting the Rift Herald, we're going to go into his red side. Concede this for that. You can't always have one thing or another. In an ideal world, in a lovely world, you always get the Rift Herald and all the Void Grubs is spelled up. None for us this game. That's fine. I'm thinking about going Black Cleaver a second too, be able to take some damage. Now Varus is going to have to move up very far to get a CS here. So I have a pretty good flank now. Nice, let's flank this guy. Hello, friend. Khan is already here. Fucking bummer. Q, smite, auto, auto, Q, auto, Q, auto, auto, Q, auto. Auto, auto, E. Ulti. And I really tried to break the thing. Q, Q, splash, Q, auto, auto, Q, auto, auto, W. Q, auto, 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 Q, auto, auto, ulti. Nice, we trade this for that, baby. Take your funny objective with your stupid winning lanes and go shove them, buddy. What did I say? If you don't commit to something, you always have another thing to play for. And that is so true, man. There's so many, like, there's so many choices in Season 14. The Rift Herald, his red side camps, my camps, gank top lane, gank bot lane. There'll always be something else. And if you're not dead set on one thing or the other and your eyes are open, you're perspicacious, then you'll be able to react and choose the right thing for you in the game because it's always changing. Alrighty, 2,800 gold. I'm not going to stay on... I'm not going to try to attack Mr. Varus personally. I'm going to clean up this scuttle and finally get a reset off. Level 11 to level 8. Now I'll show you, Shaco. I farmed my funny camps and you lose. Black Cleaver. Back onto the map. Now, Stridebreaker is a lot weaker. I don't like it as an item. Black Cleaver, pretty much the same. Gives us damage and tankiness. And then from there, we can pivot into a handful of items that pretty much do the same thing. Now, the Stridebreaker into Black Cleaver was pretty juiced last season. We're going to miss that. Clean up all of our camps, get strong, and then look for a fight. We're going to lose our form here, but that's okay. Where we're so many levels up, that's really going to help us participate in the fights. And the, the fights are going to be the only way we get our form now, because we won't be able to get the empowered form until the Baron is up, and then even getting a Baron fight. Good luck. Oh, I know what I'm going to get. So as our third item here, I'm thinking, like, we do want some more damage. We're maxing out the E. Another on-hit thing is very good. Both Kraken Slayer and Black Cleaver count as an on-hit item. So 
I want a defensive on hit item. And what do we have? We have Bang! The new Wits End. This gives you magic resist, attack speed, tenacity, and magic damage on hit. No AD on this item anymore. No extra movement speed anymore. Are right, you looking for a pick? Q. 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 W. Close. Do do do. LeBlanc, are you top lane? Auto. LeBlanc's not top. Take the turret. Smack. 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 She's gonna be mad. Sorty. Sorty. Hit the turret, I dare you, I dare you. Okay. Let's reset. Our camps are coming up. We committed to this, and then they attack that. That's the problem. If I sit here in a bush, much better. No magic, dagger. And to the bot side. So this gives us our double resistances, Ninja Tabby. It gives us armor. This gives us magic resist, and we have a lot of HP. So we're away tank here. And then with Wits End, this is going to be our tenacity item as well. <laughs> Against the Varus. The Shaco, the Rakan. And I'm basically just waiting for the dragon. How weird. What a weird item. Wits End. 50% attack speed? For what? Who needs that much? It's good for me. I get more, more smacks on my E. Hello. Q. Smite. Q. Auto. Q. Auto. 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 E. Bong. That guy's dealing no damage. Not with that. Those phony baloney items. Those are for a burst mage. You are a control mage. I know Blitzcrank. I'm coming. I got time. What, there's no minion wave. Maybe I didn't have time. Alrighty, back to my camps. The Baron is up, but their team sucks at doing Baron. Especially if we know if the Varus is there or not. We'll be fine. Pretty bad engage. Let's try to... At least get in a good position. Whoa, LeBlanc is in there. Hmm. Q. Q. Oh, missed Varus ulti. Their soul lanes are nowhere to be found. Them pushing the mid lane is super stupid here. They'll die eventually. Alrighty, well, we win Dragon. Why? Because we didn't commit to anything. Okay, we'll win Dragon, guys. Shaco's in mid lane. Not a good shove at all. The stun just doesn't achieve anything. I'm gonna farm my camps, get some HP. My soul lanes are doing jack shit and losing. The Dragon? Not my problem. If Varus is mid lane, that means that they're not doing Baron. Alrighty, and the next goal, easily going to be the Baron here. Do want to complete the Wits End. This item seems pretty expensive. 2,000 gold to the completion is no joke. Oh, this guy's going to get out of here too soon. Phew. Back to my blue buff. Dude, as the support gaps are going to feel so bad this season. The Rakan's there, I can't get Raptors. Lame. Past 20 minutes, the purple, red, and blue buff will give everyone on your team the buff. And I really like that one. The purple scuttle crap here gives a lot of vision around the area when you kill it. And then it'll show all the wards as well. Got 
guys. I would love to fight. But I got to reset for my wit's end. If their items are so bad. You don't really have to know what the items do here at the start of the season 2. It's like, I have 3 items, this guy has 2. He loses. I'm 3 levels up, he's, lo he's level 11. He loses. Where you have to be careful is Belveth, is applying that to everything else, too. Question mark. Guys, I reset. Let's push mid. We can maybe get Shaco's red side camps. Yo, Belveth, can you stop farming? Definitely not. Definitely not. I'm level 14. You got any red buff for me? Nope. Alrighty. So our blue side camps are up. Everyone's dead. Let's go farm those. I'm really surprised those red side camps are down. Now with the wits in, we're dealing 75 magic damage on hit. That's so crazy. That's so much. Now, whenever you apply that to the E, too, it's like, a, it's a ton of damage, obviously. The Kraken Slayer also has more stacking damage now. So hopefully I can show you a good example of getting a big E off. This level 13 E, with multiple on-hit items, deals so much damage. Swing and a miss. Alright, boys, I'm on the map. Who's ready to play? Oh, moving. Close. Blitzcrank said flanking and then didn't go. He's lying. Q. Q. Auto. Alright, boys, I'm on the map. Who wants to fight? E. Close. Our E's only on an 11 second cooldown with the Black Cleaver. It still gives us ability haste. Ability haste is a hard stat to come by this season. Moving. Moving. Oh. oh, Blitzcrank dropped some vision, and now we wait. See, where everyone isn't grouped up, it definitely makes things harder. So much easier to take fights in which everyone is grouped up and doing one thing. I really don't care if we're on Baron or not, that's for sure. There we go. There we go. They're getting worried. Just wait. Just wait. Guys, what's the deal? W. Q. E. Super easy fight. Wait all this out. Pick up the form. And now I'm good. Whoa! Oh! 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 Pick up all this shit. Let me do a raptor camp, I'll be back to full HP in no time. Okay, 900 HP, we're not healing that much. Still three of them alive. Really, we're not finding Shaco, huh? Oh. Nice. Ah! Shaco crit me for so much. 900 damage right there. Oh man. Some of it's magic damage, too. So we can go tankier, we can go like... Titanic Hydra. These HP and AD items, we used to go Stride Breaker. Stride Breaker is fine, but we don't exactly need a slow. We need we need HP, so I think I'll do Divine... or Sundered Sky. 55 AD, 300 HP, 15 Ability Haste. Whenever you hit the arm... the first time you hit an enemy, it crits and heals you. Based off your missing health, and this has a 6 second per target cooldown. Excessive health is gained as a shield. So that's just basically more HP. And then a lot more AD to go with it. And to whoever is still thanking Trinity Force, don't forget, Velveth has the lowest base AD. Nice dodge. This is going to be the real Shaco. Oh, come on. Okay, okay. Nice, let's Baron. Their top lane, their support, and their jungler is dead. And it's the easiest Baron. Mid lane and AD are very much carry rolls. Wow, we are shredding this thing. Smite. Bong. Alrighty, finally an empowered form too. 
I'll go ahead and pass towards Dragon. Quite a bit of time on that. Shoot. And he better keep backing up. Bong. Oh yeah, this item, the Tunneler, 250 HP, 15 AD. It's honestly not bad, it's like a Giant's Belt plus, um, plus almost a Pickaxe, it's really good. Let's get level 16 and then look to fight. Bop, 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 bop. Nice. Dude, 55% attack speed with Wits in. Like, we missed the attack speed from Stridebreaker as an item early, but like, this makes up for it. I think any noobs over here? Q W auto 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 Q auto auto E. He's dead. He's dead, and I don't even have like the juiced on hit items. Why are you guys dead? Belvath, what the heck are you doing? Split pushing. What? Khan's not there. I think. Bop, 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 bop. Close. All right, let's push. Think, 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 think. I could look to push top too. We have the Sundered Sky off Futures Market. That's why I really like Futures Market. It helps you get that new quiver early, and it helps you complete full items. You really want the full item as Belveth. I only need to do so many camps to get level 17, and then we still have no duration on the Baron. Wait, we do. Let's fight LeBlanc. Focus up. Q, W, Q. Bong. Let's push top. Spawn some funny minions. This is the Baron buff. Look at that. Hand of Baron. They changed the icon. Pushing. I got some feedback from Draven. He says, Belveth, open through mid. Seems like I need to say it. Say what? No, you're stupid. We must push through mid. You sure that's the only way? Check out top lane right now. LOL. I want to try to cut off the Varus and the Rakan entering top lane here. But not engage on them until they misstep. And if they don't misstep, then we take the turret. LOL. Auto, auto, auto. Q. W. Q. E. <laughs> it's like one shot. Take the turret. Bop, 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 bop. Nice. Beep, pop, pop, W, Q, auto, auto, Q, 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 ulti. Pop, pop, pop. GG, final score 9, 3, and 5. <clears throat> I farmed and my team was pissed, baby. That's a perfect game right there. Concede objectives. Enemy, give the enemy everything they wanted. Farm and make my allies pissed. Become un, like, just infallible mid game. I'm three levels up on Shaco and I have three items to two. It's never going to be losing. You have to walk into the enemy jungle, walk into five people and die to lose a fight like that. Alrighty, GG. Final damage dealt 15, 1,500. And then we have magic and physical damage. So we dealt 22,000 magic damage. And that's just through the wit's end itself. None of these other items deal magic damage. Kraken is physical, Black Cleaver is physical, and then Sundered Sky is physical. So that's a lot of damn damage just from the wit's end. And it happens so fast with the E that it's kind of hard to showcase. But yeah. I like I like uh, how you have the versatility with these items, but I also like farm maxing the enemy jungle. I can see this for that. Who would have guessed? All right, GG. See you in the next one. This matchup's pretty even versus Kane. You both farm very quickly. It's usually a battle who randomly drops the ball, sure, but like if you find Kane in the river, you're going to win the fight. So I think he starts red side. So I could just start my blue and then pass down. Blue Gromp are 
are our slowest camps. So, alrighty, and then Q to the right, Q up, warp, Q down, Q down. Help! You got one airy proc, that's not too bad. Because I want to guarantee. Why, sweeper? Well, you still kind of tell me that you start red side. I'll be honest. Swap to a sweep ourselves because we're not going to be invading his jungle. I'm not going to be contesting it. As we pass down two, we'll be passing towards uh, Caitlyn and Lux. They push. Maybe can gank. Sure, I'm passing away from the void grubs in a sense, but I could always do the gromp and then blue and get a level up after turn two and turn three. Let's try our best here. We're definitely going Kraken Slayer. We're definitely farming. Every time I skip camps, does not work. <laughs> does not work in the slightest. Turn one, turn two. Wah. Why would you ward my blue? So stupid. Wah. Jerk. Buzz off, buddy. Run. Q, moving. Well, he can't land a Q on me, so that's good. Wah. Bunch of jokesters here. Auto Q moving. Kill that Cho'Gath. Moving. Q auto. Auto. Auto Q auto. Auto W. Auto Q. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for visiting, and I'll see you in hell. I see he started my wolves. I see that's why they were being so weird. Let's finish up the Gromp and then go ahead and reset. We have 600 gold to spend, so. And we need to get our HP back. No matter how much I farm, I will not sustain back to full HP. So then Kane could just do the same stuff going into my red side if he was to attack me again. Now if I reset like this, I'll have a couple long swords. And even if he gets into my red side, I can try to run him down because he only got one camp. So even if he takes one of my red side camps, we'll both be level two. And we can kind of rinse and repeat. I'm going to get a control ward. I really like the control ward recently. Since the... Since we have to fight around the objectives so early, being able to ward around the objectives or any of the entrances of the jungle opens up a lot of info and it's so important it seems. I feel like you'll see that a lot as the season progresses is everyone will be getting control wards and the ones who don't are trolling. Alrighty, I'm gonna do my golems up to raptors. I'm stronger than the cane here, so if I move into the river, we have a winning fight. Nice. Nice. Kane's in his blue side, too. Q. Auto. Auto. We're not going to invade, obviously. That's warded. Kane's in his blue side, and my bot lane is freezing. They also don't have a melee champ. So you guessed it, back to the camps. Nothing to it but to just farm the camps and then look for the play after. And that's how we win. Whoa, Nelly. It's gonna be nine on AD. Finally, we're level four. Now, Mid lane's warded on right side, and that's a big wave. So even if I was trying to gank, Zoe would have to move past the wave. Whack. Farm my camps. The E on the wolves there always gets me, like, a lot of HP. 32 CS on Kane, but he doesn't have any long swords. Okay. So if Cho'Gath keeps pushing, I may have a gank. Um, right, so he won't be able to hit level 6 off this, so that's good. Moving. Nice, he's super far up. Main deal, just don't Q towards him. Auto. Auto, moving. Q. Auto. Auto, Q. Auto. Q, W. Auto, Q. E, Q. He's just not spending his W or anything like that. He did have pretty low mana, so... And then we can just reset once again. We need to get our HP back. Respawning Scuttle is going to be topside, so gromp this. 
Grob Scuttle, and then into the Void Grubs. Noon Quiver, Dagger, and then I'll Futures out the Recurve Bow. This gives me a lot more damage with the 15 magic damage on hit. Hopefully it matters. <laughs> we have a pretty big shutdown too. Well, we have a shutdown, 150. But like I said, we win the early game, so that's a given. The real shebang here is how we keep it going. Is the respawn scuttle not topside? I don't understand. Kane has a serrated dirk, so we have two items, he has one. We win. Into the river. Let's find some noobs. Sweeper moving. We're spotted, but that's okay. I'm gonna start the void grubs and see if they move into us. Because the the cane can be in nice into our blue side here. Q. Moving. Q W. I can't go in. If their mid laner move, we'd be so screwed. I took so much damage there. Alrighty, back to the camps. I'm gonna put a control word right here so that we're safe. I don't know what dealt so much damage to me, I'll be honest. So no easy Void Grubs despite having super good position. So we'll farm our camps and then get level 6 and we can look to do those all over again. Getting the Void Grubs early is not necessary. What's nice is that they give you XP. XP and gold that you wouldn't get otherwise. See, now that Scuttle is spawned right there, I wonder if that's real. It's hard to trust the minimap. Is this bug? Because this Scuttle would give me level 6 and then I could do one Void Grub and then I could get form. Adios. Well, this is awkward. He got one of them, but he doesn't have ulti now. Moving. There's his flash. Now Oriana's gonna be moving, so I'll hit the scuttle crab to the left side. Just give me a second, Kale. I'm working on it. Level 6, and then if you take one of these, boom, you get the empowered form at 180 on the ulti timer. Nice. And then the Void Grub buff itself, more damage to the turrets, not that important. Um, let me stay, actually. We need to keep farming. The Cho'Gath really screwed up by overstaying and attacking those. So now that we have this sort of overstay, we can try to attack this guy's raptors. Q, moving. W. Bubble. So no bubble. Cute. This area had to be warded if they're playing like that. And now the cane can get into my red side, so L. But like my lanes suck, so who cares? Fifty-one gold. And then the timer right here is lying to me. It's gonna be flash from Oriana. Now, Oriana's level 8, but she doesn't have much mana. Let's move in behind her right here, and if we flash on top of her, we probably have a good chance. She leveled up and has lost chapter, L. Take this wave. And keep moving bot side, my balling's super far forward. Really? Nobody? I'll reset then. I have to assume that my red side was taken, but I guess we'll find out. Wood Grubs respawn in 2.30. Kraken Slayer, and then honestly I would love to start pathing bot. My bot lane's winning super hard, so I'd rather play around them than the, the Kale and the Cho'Gath up here. So I'll farm my camps down towards bot lane. Oh nice, the Void Grub buff is helping them. So with the Void Grub, it gives everyone extra true damage to the turrets, and with the turret plates, they get tankier the more that you take, but true damage doesn't care about that. So it's going to allow your team to get more turret plates. Looks like Kale's going to trade. This guy's level 9. Alrighty, so we have to wait for a long time right here. My Zoe's not even full HP, what's the deal? Q. Alrighty. Not gonna chase that, that's for sure.
And since Kane was topside, I could try to get into his blue side here. And then take some of these camps. Okay. Because with that, with the soul lanes being high level, we need to get a lot more farm. Bup, 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 bup. Really, their bot lane doesn't stay? Oops. Since their bot lane doesn't stay, that's a gromp for me. We have 79 CS to Kane 72. I would like that to be higher. But it is what it is. So we take these camps, we deny those from Kane. And now let's reset and go to the top side and be there for the Void Grubs. They are pretty mixed team comp, so... Nice, they entered. It's like AP, AP, AP. I don't know, man. I'm getting two long swords, and I'll figure it out later. So Kraken Slayer is going to be our first item, just like always. You need to farm, and you need to have a lot of farm to win on Belveth. Kraken Slayer helps us with that. It also helps us with fighting. It now stacks up a lot more. Whenever you hit the same target, you stack up more and more damage every third auto. Phew. Alrighty, so Kane got form. That's okay. And we're back at it. Give me those Void Grubs. You can't avoid the vision on that thing anymore, so that kind of sucks, but he's fine. Oh. Oh no. These guys are being ganked too early. It's a 3v3 once I show up and they're focusing Jonna for now. Don't get knocked up. Yes. Auto, Q, W. Q, auto, auto, E. Nice. They played it so well. No, Jonna, baby! Yes! Yes! Okay, let's flank the Lux. Okay. She's not playing. Clean up the Void Grubs here. Since they got one of the Void Grubs, if you remember, Cho'Gath killed one of them. We won't have six stacks. If you get five stacks, then whenever you hit the turrets, then you spawn one of those funny minions. If you have six stacks, then you spawn two of them. So since we killed five of them right here, whenever anyone hits the turret, then they'll be dealing extra true damage as well as spawning an extra one of the Void Grub minions. And that really, like, it really, really helps with turret dives and things like that when you're going in and out of fights. Because then, all of a sudden, there's just, like, these minions to tank. What? You're out of your mind, big man. Level 8, into my jungle? What's the deal? He's lucky I got no one around me right here. I'm gonna go ahead and start the dragon, and then see if the enemy wants to come fight me. We have a good flank onto bot lane. Nice. Kursana is going to be rich. We got the dragon. Kane entered. I'm taking his jungle. <laughs> Their bot lane's so behind. Their jungle's so behind. Just like that for Kane, too. Four deaths, and you're down just 20 CS. Surprise, you instantly lose the game. Now, at 14 minutes, every single time, the Rift Herald will spawn. The Rift Herald's basically the same. It now has this, where Rift Herald takes 50% reduced damage to whomever she last attacked. So it's pretty much like the Baron buff. Auto, auto, Q, E. Close. We're fine. So it's like Baron, whoever is hitting, whoever's getting hit by it, is going to deal reduced damage. So for Belveth, this pretty much sucks. It sucks because this this thing's designed to be duo. So like, I'm doing it, Kale's dealing more damage, man, you know? So like, I want a tank top more than ever. Bang. Rift Herald also gives us the 180 on the form. And then we get that empowered recall. We can now jump in the Rift Herald, but it honestly isn't that interesting. GG. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough that they FF. Step one, farm. Step two, 
Kill the bad guys. Step three, farm. Step two, have winning lanes. Step three, farm. Step four, win. Alrighty, GG. Final damage dealt is going to be 4,600. Not too bad. And that'll put us at diamond four, 46 LP. Alrighty, thanks for watching. That will be the last of the three games here for the intro into season 14. Hope you guys are doing having fun in your games. It's not about winning or losing at this point. So figuring it out. So have fun with it. Go for some fights. But if you're wondering why you're behind in the game's impossible and you're in purgatory, it's not that the game changed. It's that you have to farm your camps. That I am learning the hard way. Look at this. Six and seven is my win-loss. Alrighty. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.